we're going to be converting a simple PVC pipe into a functioning bow. To build this very, very simple bow, here's the tools. We have got a hacksaw, a cutter, a pair of scissors, a wire cutter, a lighter, marker pen, a drill, measuring tape, insulation tubing, string, electrical tape, and then at the end you'll use a symbol cable tie as, a, um, as an arrow rest. Your other element you got over here is a heating gun and then we will use this to melt down your, um, your, your, your PVC which is going to give it its shape. You could heat this in, uh, in other ways but we have found this is the most efficient way to do it because it takes less time um, to, 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 to get the result that you're looking for. This is ordinary laminated board right uh, that you use to make floorboards or uh, wall coverings we have and this is just all leftovers and you've got two of them that you're going to use for your bow we've got two little wedges over here which we will place our pvc pipe in between so a very important thing about this pipe is that the wall must be of a minimum 1.6 millimeters thick uh, anything thinner is not strong enough and you won't be able to pull uh, the pull the bow without it breaking this is a 125 centimeter uh, tube and it'll make a bow for a child. Right? If you want to make one for an adult, you'd need to obviously have one that is slightly longer, probably at 1.8 meters length. The bow will take you approximately three to four hours to make. So we'll begin with measuring the bow. In this case over here, we'll measure the bow. We've got 1.25 centimeters, and I will mark off the middle of the bow. I mark the middle of the bow and then I'm going to draw a ring around the middle. The next step would be to put now two more lines on either side of the middle mark. I take nine and a half centimeters on either side and I mark both of these on my pipe. Now at these marks over here I'm going to extend this line to go around so that I've got it going around the pipe on both ends. What we've marked out over here is the middle section of the bow. We take our heat gun and we're going to heat it up to the maximum heat. This one will go to 630 degrees. And it's got to be very careful with this because it's very hot. And then we're going to simply heat up the pipe Gently, don't get too close to the pipe because you don't want to scorch it. Any scorch marks on the pipe over here is going to cause a weak point which will snap the bow later on. To distribute the heat evenly, you turn the tube so that you get the heat evenly distributed through the tube. Don't go past the first marking on your limb. Don't dwell on any particular area as you're going to have uneven heat distribution and it's going to be too soft in some places and not enough in others. As you can see, the tube is now deforming. It's melting. Okay. At this point, we'll take our other piece of wood and we're going to place it on the tubing. The end of the tube is probably about over here. And I don't want to move too high up over here because then it creates too much of an indentation over here which once again becomes a weak point. And then we're going to squash the end, making sure not to, too, to crush it too much at this point over here. Reason why we have placed these little wedges over here. All we're doing over here is simply applying body weight onto the board to make sure that now the bow is flattening out. This will probably take about three to four minutes and here we can see the tube, which is still fairly hot, but it is now very flat. Once this is cool enough to hold its shape, you just pick it up and we do the same thing the other side. As you can see over here, I've got a dimple over here, which I'm not particularly happy with. I can correct this simply by heating it up again. When you heat it up again, you will notice that the PVC pipe will 
come back to its original shape. And then it becomes malleable again and then we can do the correction as required. This will now cool down for approximately 20 to 25 minutes until you can touch it without it being too hot. Our next step now is to mark off the area where we're going to mark the holes for the string and we're going to trim off to take off these horrible corners on the end over here. We're going to measure the tube. This one over here is flattened out to five centimeters, so at two and a half centimeters, I put in a mark in the middle. I do the same thing the other side. Then I use my little finger and the width of my little finger, I'm going to put a mark opposite my original mark. Then the side of my little finger, I will mark off on either side of the tube. Mark it there, all right. A shallow V, which I will draw in from the end towards the middle. And I'll do the same thing the other side. If you're doing this with children, use their thumb. It's thicker than their, than their little finger. This is just a little aesthetic uh, a touch that we put to the bow so that you don't have any sharp corners on the end. We take this now to the edge of the table over here. Using my thumb as a guide, I'm going to place the hacksaw on the line and then I'm going to gently cut this corner piece off. We can now see that there's now burrs from the cut, a simple little piece of sandpaper, and we're just going to scratch this off. There's no need to go too far with this. Just get it clean. Next is to put your hole for your string in both ends. Once again, you will take a drill. Here I'm just simply drilling through the hole that I put there, through the mark that I put here earlier. You see over here that there is a crush mark here and a crush mark over here. This part over here is going to be the front of the bow. The other side of the bow is going to be flat. So you're going to put the flat side onto your board and then we're going to heat up now only this middle section. So once again you're going to turn your uh, your, your, your bow around so that you distribute the heat evenly throughout the section. Very important over here now is that when you bend it, you need to pull outwards. This maintains the shape of the, the bow without creating any creases in the tube, which would then be weak points. We're probably bending this about 15 degrees either side. Holding it like this for about three to four minutes would be sufficient for it to hold its shape. If you make a little error over here and you're not straight, then simply heat it up again and straighten it out. The only part that is bending is this section over here between our marks that we put in right in the beginning. So here we have a tube that has been resting for about uh, 30 minutes. It is now, as you can see, completely cold to the touch. So I added a little bit of marking over here. This is simply just to indicate where I'm going to place my handle. The handle goes below the middle of the, of the tube because your arrow is going to be shot from the middle of the bow. The handle is made from ordinary insulation tubing. We cut a little section, I place it on the middle section, on the middle line, I take electrical tape and I go around the middle line of the, of the, of, of the bow, making sure that this remains in the center. I go around twice, Take a pair of scissors.
and tidy it up. I'm using regular nylon string over here, uh, one millimeter thickness. I'm going to pass it through the bottom hole. I go from the inside of the bow to the outside. And then I do a simple knot by going around two or three times and then tightening it up. And the string is now not going to pull out of this hole. Pull it in tight. Then my length of string is going to be cut probably 10 to 15 centimeters beyond the end of the, the other end of the bow. Take a lighter, cinch the end off over here, then pass it through from the inside to the outside. To put the bow under tension, I'm going to push down on the bow, not too hard, and then I'm going to hold it in this position while my friend now ties the same knot that I've done earlier on. All that remains to do now is to cut off the ends. All right, so here we have the bow that is basically ready to shoot. All, right? All that is required now is to put an arrow rest on. For a right-handed person, the zip tie placed in this way, going around that way, so that it is pulling out on the outside of the bow. If it's a left-handed person, you're going to do it the opposite but always do it around the front like that so that you don't dislodge this with a hand when you're shooting the poundage of this bow is probably going to be around 10 to 12 pounds so ideal for a child between sort of ages 8 to 12. the draw length on this one is probably going to be uh, in the region of about uh, between 15 and 20 inches we're not going to get more than that and this is sufficient for uh, for the young one who's going to be using this. Here we have our completed bow. We have done, made this one up here in Switzerland. Total dollar value, not more than $15. And the bow itself is very, very basic. An ideal tool for beginners to take up a passion, perhaps one for life.